بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اللهم صل وسلم على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد in the name of Allah the Lord of everything and the Lord of all the worlds I ask Allah to send his salutations and peace and blessings up on Prophet Muhammad and whoever follows Prophet Muhammad in good deeds until the day of resurrection. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Now, in this sitting, we're going to speak about a very important topic. This topic affects everyone, big or small, young or old. Male or female, brothers or sisters. This is a very important aspect of our Islamic life. This is brotherhood. No matter who you are, what you do, where you're from, you need a friend in this world. No matter how much money you have, how poor you are, whatever you, de you do every day, you need a companion. Now the question is, how do we choose our companion? So the topic today is companionship, brotherhood. Now, Throughout the Islamic legislations, you can always find or something indicating to us the importance of having a companion. Now Allah Zawajal has said in his book, فَإِذَا دَخَلْتُمْ بُيُوتًا فَسَلِّمُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ تَحِيَّةً مِّنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ And if you enter a home, give Greetings to one another. Greetings from Allah. Now from this verse, you can see that Allah the Most High is indicating to us the importance of giving salam to each other. Which comes back to my first and most important topic, brotherhood again. We need a companion in this world. We need someone to remind us of Allah. We need someone to remind us of the hadith of the Prophet The Prophet also said, The person is up on, up on the religion of his friend. So look at who he accommodates or who he mixes with. The Prophet has also said through a narration that you should not travel by yourself at night or just at the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ also have prohibited one to sleep by himself in a home. Okay, I'm going to call him ﷺ. And all these stuff. So it's important for us to have a brother or a sister which is beneficial to us in every way. That person should be reminding us of meeting our Lord. He should remind us to do good each time. He should be encouraging us to do good virtues. He should be prohibiting the evil that can occur. At the end of the day, we're all humans. And the shaitan, may Allah give him and put his curse upon the shaitan. At the end of the day, the shaitan wants to take us away from the straight path. Or a companion who should be righteous, should be Helping us to keep on that straight path that Allah wants us to be upon. Think, brothers and sisters. Do we have such a companion? Do we have a companion that reminds us to remember Allah? 
Do our, our companion remind us to go and pray salat in the masjid? Do our companion encourage us to pray in the first row? Do our companions remind us to lower our gaze when we see something that we shouldn't be looking at? Does our companion encourage us not to listen to music? Does our companion encourage us not to watch movies? Movies, of course, where you have women uncovered. Now, if you have companions that are not of this type, then we need to look in ourselves and look at the companions that we have and try to make a change. Now, let's move on to another hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ said that they are five rights upon a Muslim to another Muslim. Now, let's go through the five. The first one is replying to the greetings. So, you give salam to your friend, he replies to you. And of course, the better of the two is the one that gives the salam first. And it's compulsory for the other companion to respond. Now, of course, it's different levels of responding. You can say, Wa alaikum as salam, and that's the least. Or you can say, Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah. And the best of all is saying, Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah wa that's the best of all. Now let's go on to the second right of a Muslim upon a Muslim. See, the importance of having a companion and the importance of having a good pious companion. The second right of a Muslim is visiting the sick. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Iyadatul Marid, meaning visiting him over and over. So if your friend is sick, it's your right upon him to go and see what's his situation. For example, you haven't seen your brother that prays beside you in the same masjid for about three, two days. You should be Islamic and sensitive enough to notice that your brother is missing. And if he's missing, what should you do? What's the most logical thing you should do? Ask about him. Visit him. See what's his situation like. Try to get the reward. Try to build the unity in the Islamic community. Try to care for someone. Then we go to the third right of a Muslim upon another Muslim. And it is falling through the funeral processions. So if your brother has died, you should go and pray on him and take his body to the burial area, the grave. The fourth is accepting an invitation from your Muslim brother or sister. The fifth is when your brother or sister sneezes and say, Alhamdulillah, you should say, Yurhamakallah, and so forth. So you can see through the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, the importance of having a companion in this life. The importance of Having a companion that reminds you of the Quran and the Sunnah through your daily life style. And also, I just remembered, there's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where the Prophet ﷺ said that لا تدخلوا جنة حتى تؤمنوا ولا تؤمنوا حتى تحابون على عدلكم على شيء إذا فألتموه أحببتم أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم you shall not enter paradise until you believe. You will not believe until you truly love each other. Shouldn't I tell you something that if you do it, you will love each other? Afshu salam bainakum. Spread the greetings amongst you. Spread it. There, there are many benefits of giving salam in the Muslim community. Many. One, you should make it for the sake of Allah. So when you make it for the sake of Allah, Allah will bless you according to the intention to please Him first and foremost. Secondly, secondly it removes that enmity, that enemy feeling that someone will have for another. Third, when you say, Assalamu Alaikum, it's as if you're saying, 
I am freeing you from my evil. Wa rahmatullah, you're asking Allah to send his blessings upon you. And barakatuh to him. The blessings of Allah be upon you. So we can see the importance of having a companion. A companion that's pious. A companion that's remind you of the Quran and your sun the sunnah throughout your lifestyle. A companion that help you to forbid the evil. A companion that helps you to remember Allah. So throughout all these, look in yourself. See what type of companion you have. Look at the people you're mixing with. Are they helping you? Or are they or are they just destroying your normal lifestyle, your Islamic lifestyle, and your future lifestyle as a believer or as a person that who is willing to meet their Lord on the day of resurrection? We have to be conscious about these things. Islam was revealed for us to implement in our life, not for just saying, oh, we're Muslims, we do this and that by, by, by tongue. We should have implementation on the tongue, implementing in the heart, and implementing on the limbs on a daily, minutely basis. Islam is not just a passport name or a passport topic. Yeah, I'm Muslim. We should try to implement Islam how the Prophet ﷺ has done it and how the companions have understood the religion and how and foremost, and what most importantly, how Allah wants us to practice the religion. So keep these points in mind when you're going about your daily lifestyle, when you are mixing with people, when you are finding a companion. Keep this in mind and know that everything that you're doing, you have to give a record of it and for it on the day of judgment. Keep that in your foremind. Keep it in your, your mind every time throughout your life because know that we're going back to Allah. Allah. We're going back to Allah for reckoning. So either we go to the paradise or either we go to the hellfire and may Allah protect us from the latter. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Thank you for listening and I hope to see you in our next sitting of aspects that affect Muslims in general. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.